I'm Michelle Nadine Baker, your chronic lymphocytic leukemia reporter for the patient story. And I'm a CLL patient myself. I just want to share with you that there is just so much happening in terms of new treatment research for all of us. There are more choices than ever when it's time to be treated and even more in the pipeline. But how do you know what they are and how they're different and which one is best for you? Our program today will help new and not so new CLL patients learn today's treatment landscape and the hottest drug trials from two leading CLL specialists, Dr. Bill Weirda at MD Anderson in Houston and Dr. Nicole Lamana at Columbia University Medical Center in New York City. And they are both the heads of their CLL departments there. So many patients think they need to start on chemotherapy as treatment. Uh, this is old school thinking, but how is that? Targeted therapies, BTK, BCL2, um, are superior to chemo, chemoimmunotherapy. So I don't like to think about or talk about or plan for chemoimmunotherapy any longer because I think it's inferior treatment for our patients and, and much more aligned with giving small molecule inhibitor-based therapy. I think for patients in, in, and moving that discussion a little bit further, what patients need to think about and have a discussion with their physician about is, do I want fixed duration or finite duration treatment? Do I wanna get in remission and get off treatment and have a reasonable period of time to expect off treatment in remission? Or do I wanna go on a maintenance and have a medication that I take every day that is extremely effective at controlling the disease, but I continue on it. And there are side effects associated with all treatments, um, including the continuous treatment. Chemotherapy outcomes or outcomes with chemotherapy were inferior to outcomes for treatment with small molecule inhibitors, whether we're talking about venetoclax-based therapy or BCL2 inhibitor-based therapy, or we're talking about BTK inhibitor-based therapy. So the small molecule inhibitors that we have uh, are oral agents, and there are um, two category, three categories right now that we have of drugs that fall into the small molecule inhibitor category. BCL2 inhibitors, we have one. There are several that are in clinical trial. The one that we have is called venetoclax very potent at eliminating disease, very potent at getting deep remissions. It's the type of treatment that we give with the expectation of giving it for a set period of time and then stopping treatment once patients are in remission. The next category is um, BTK inhibitors. Those have been around longer than BCL2 inhibitor. Examples of this drug that we currently have available are acalabrutinib and dibrutinib. Ibrutinib has the most experience associated with it, and we have the most data and most patients treated so far on clinical trials with ibrutinib. Acalabrutinib, though, is, um, is approved. Zanubrutinib is not yet approved, but perhaps will be in the next, uh, within the next year, probably. Um, those are drugs that are extremely effective at controlling the disease, but not as effective as, for example, venetoclax is in terms of getting the amount of disease down to the point where we're comfortable with stopping treatment. So the best response, the lowest level of disease is usually still measurable with the BTK inhibitors like ibrutinib or acalabrutinib. So patients go on that, those medicines and they stay on them until they don't work any longer. It's more of a maintenance type treatment. Third category of drugs are the PI3 kinase inhibitors. There's two that we have currently available. One is called idelalisib, the other is called duvalisib. Those have a bit more side effects and toxicities associated with them, um, particularly idelalisib, um, and are used less frequently um, these days. Um, Ibrutinib and the BTK inhibitors and the and venetoclax or BCL2 inhibitors extremely effective and gives very good and durable disease control. And you can you can switch between those two if you develop resistance. So if you develop resistance to venetoclax, for example, you can switch to um, the BTK inhibitors, one of the BTK inhibitors, and expect a response, and vice versa. There's another generation and category of BTKIs. It's a new type. It's reversible and non-covalent. 
One of them is in trial and getting much attention, and that one is called pertobrutinib. I know, another long name, but until this trial, patients, and this includes me, and I'm currently on one, we hadn't known about these types of BTK inhibitor differentiators. So, you know, there's reversible and there's irreversible, covalent and non-covalent. There's a lot of things happening in CLL. There are a lot of new and exciting drugs that we're studying that are in early development. There's a drug called pirtabrutinib, which is a reversible inhibitor of BTK, which you would consider giving in a patient who has developed resistance to one of the irreversible inhibitors, uh, such as ibrutinib, xanubrutinib, um, or um, acalabrutinib. So pirtabrutinib is looking very promising. It's active in patients who are resistant to irreversible inhibitors, and those remissions are lasting a reasonable amount of time. It also is working in patients who are resistant to ibrutinib and um, venetoclax. Um, so we're excited about that. We can actually test for that in the lab. So we can send somebody's blood or their bone marrow sample and see that they might have, they might starting to develop some resistant to the drug that they're on. And we've identified some of the, these mutations. Looking at some of, looking at pertabrutinib, that certainly that this is a drug that might be able to reverse or overcome the resistant mutation that patients have developed on the other uh, BTK inhibitors. And that may be useful to have another medicine. We know venetoclax works for these individuals, but having yet another BTK inhibitor that works slightly differently may also be helpful. Combination therapies. That means giving two or more treatments concurrently. Combining treatments isn't new. FCR, the former CLL go-to treatment, was three drugs given all together. It was two chemotherapies, fludarabine and cyclophosphamide, plus a monoclonal antibody, rituxan, otherwise known as rituximab. But today, many CLL trials are testing various drug combinations of individually approved drugs, such as acalabrutinib, plus venetoclax, plus abinutuzumab, that's called AVO, and all eyes are on this important triplet trial, as it could lead to more combination trials being approved. It's currently in a phase three registration trial, and if approved, doctors say it will be practice changing. CLL trials are also comparing drug combinations with other drug combinations. A highly anticipated trial pitted a brutinib plus venetoclax against chlorambucil plus obinutuzumab. Abrutinib plus venetoclax has better results, giving a nice, durable, that's lengthy remission with the possibility of going treatment-free for a while. Can we take two orals, so a BTK inhibitor and a BCL2 inhibitor, and then do more of what they call a time-limited approach, right? So then taking both of these oral agents for a period of time and then stopping. Um, so then they would be um, not that you wouldn't then be taking the BTK inhibitor chronically indefinitely. Um, and so there were many trials focusing very exciting results. The responses are very good with the oral oral combinations, uh, but we need longer follow up, I think. Both of these trials include venetoclax and many other trials using it are having great results. If we're talking about achieving an undetectable MRD state, venetoclax-based therapy is what we need to give to do that, whether it's the standard treatment, which is venetoclax plus obinutuzumab, which is a CD20 antibody, or a newer combination, venetoclax plus ibrutinib, venetoclax plus acalabrutinib, those combinations, all of which include venetoclax, are intended to get into a deep remission, undetectable MRD, and time off treatment. And there are other types of treatments being studied for CLL patients. There are definitely some bispecific monoclonal antibodies that are also being looked at um, that also target the CLL cells. And so they're early in development. Um, and so that, that's something that we're going to be stay tuned. And of course, many of us have also always talked about CAR T cell, right? So looking at different forms of immunotherapy uh, to try to target the CLL cells in a different way.
um, manipulating, you know, the cells to then have the cells stimulated so that they attack your CLL cells. And so certainly there's, you know, longer follow up on the CAR T cell data as well. CAR T is an exciting topic. It's an area that I've been involved in in development. Um, and we will hear more about CAR T. I think there are patients, I have had many patients who have been treated with CAR T have a, and who were resistant to standard treatments, who have had very durable remissions and who are doing uh, very well. So for me, that holds a lot of promise um, for our patients. Are there any treatments that can keep you from relapsing? We know that patients can relapse even after these more aggressive therapies like CAR T and allogeneic stem cell transplants. So having multiple choices and having these conversations with your physician and team is great because there's more than one option that is really good therapy for your disease, which is very hopeful and great that you can that you can is available for you. So I think that the field has come a long way. Stay tuned. We're doing a lot more, but there's lots of lots of good things to look forward to. With so much research, are we getting closer to a cure? In order for a patient to be cured, meaning no more leukemia period ever to be seen, they have to be undetectable MRD, whether that's at the end of treatment or it's three years or five years later. I'm optimistic that we are curing some patients currently with our non-chemo treatment. Certainly we know patients are being cured with chemo options. The problem is that chemo has side effects and toxicities associated with it, and we have exceptionally good treatments now with small molecule inhibitors to the point where I think despite the fact that we are able to cure some patients with, um, with chemo, it doesn't justify giving every patient who potentially could be cured the chemo because it's only about half of those patients. I think that, you know, we're going to need a lot more long-term follow-up to show that something is potentially curative in CLL. Um, you know, so stay tuned because some of this combination data, I think in some subgroups might be, uh, might render somebody with undetectable MRD for a really, really long time and albeit perhaps even cured. Uh, but we're, you know, uh, I never use that word. I use that word very cautiously. Uh, but I think the therapies have gotten so great that there's a there's no doubt a potential, and I think that for some individuals. And so I think that uh, we're getting to a very good point, but we still have a lot of work to do. Clinical trials are a great way to get tomorrow's treatment today. If you're interested in finding out more, ask your own CLL medical team if they have any open trials or any coming up in the future that would be a good match for you. And for more trial information, check out clinicaltrials.gov. That's clinicaltrials.gov. I think clinical trials are important. They're the only way that we're gonna make progress in the disease. They're the only way we've made, made progress in treating the disease and, and they're very, very important. Promising ongoing research continues producing more treatments for CLL patients with much more on the way. In the near term, be on the lookout for news on potential FDA approvals for Xanabrutinib, that's a BTK inhibitor, on abrutinib and venetoclax in combination. Remember, this is that important trial that could be practice changing and it could lead to more combination approvals. Also look out for a calabrutinib plus venetoclax plus a benetuzumab and many more combination treatments that are currently in trial and on their way. Keep an eye on updates for pertobrutinib and others in this new class of BTK inhibitors, as well as CAR T cell therapy and the latest generations of BCL2 drugs like venetoclax and so much more. There's just more and more coming up for us as CLL patients. As a CLL patient, Seeing so much ongoing research and drug discoveries gives me so much hope. And I'm driven to share, to help you better advocate for yourself and to gain hope in your own journey. For The Patient's Story, I'm Michelle Nadine Baker reporting. Thank you. Thank you.